This video has been made possible by me because we have a sale going on right now and some new merchandise. So make sure you check it out at casuallyexplained.com. While the feeling of missing out on something is generally pretty unpleasant, it's usually the case that you suffer a lot more in imagination than in reality. Meaning what's really bothering you isn't that you're missing out, it's the fear that you're missing out. And the truth of the matter is that your instinct isn't always correct. As an example, let's say you've been invited to a friend's birthday and you say you're gonna go, but then you get invited to another friend's birthday and there sounds like more fun. Do you cancel on the first friend to go to the party that seems like more fun and potentially hurt their feelings, or do you stick to the one you've already committed to? Exactly. It's incredibly unlikely that two of your three friends have the same birthday. When it comes down to it, I think the most effective way of dealing with the fear of missing out is managing your expectations. And my strategy for making sure I make a good decision is to take what my fear of missing out thinks will happen and contrast it with my much more modest expectations based on past experience, and then I can deduce that reality will be somewhere in between. So to start with, we have the situations where your expectations based on past experience are generally pretty low. As an example, imagine a college classmate from your computer science class invites you to a frat party and you're wondering who's going to be there. So as you're scrolling through the events page to see if it's all guys, suddenly you see a new update by the host who says, Don't want to ruin the surprise, but we have some pretty powerful connections. Winky face. In this situation, the fear of missing out says, Elon Musk and Natalie Dormer. But your generally low expectations say, at least it'll be the nursing faculty. If we assume reality is somewhere in between, that still sounds pretty good. Then as you get there, ready to fend off the nurses who'll be trying to mend your broken heart, you'll immediately realize that when a comp sci freshman thinks they have powerful connections, what they really mean is about one gig up and one gig down. And while this might seem like reality was not between our past experience and our fear of missing out like we had planned, by providing us with another reference, it has allowed us to move on to the next stage of dealing with the fear of missing out. Lowering your expectations. And the technique that I like to use to get a better sense of reality is taking what my fear of missing out thinks will happen and contrasting it with the worst case scenario. As an example, as a person who goes to the gym a lot but you can't tell, sometimes I look at world-class athletes that I could never be like, such as four times world's strongest man Brian Shaw, who's six foot eight, 450 pounds, and I feel like I'm missing out. And then I think of all the bad things about literally being the size of a refrigerator. To be honest, I haven't come up with anything yet. As a better example, sometimes I imagine what would have happened if I hadn't dropped out of school, and I start getting ahead of myself by thinking things like, You'd probably finish your degree, know how to program, maybe even be doing a post-grad in machine learning or something actually useful. And then I look at myself now with no education, sitting around streaming Super Smash Bros, and I feel like I'm missing out. And then I think of the worst case scenario of that timeline, which is that I'd probably be spending all my time by myself because I wouldn't be socializing, I'd be tens of thousands of dollars in debt, putting Jameson in my decaf iced coffee every morning to wake up, and even with a PhD in artificial intelligence, I'd probably still get clapped by a level 9 Luigi. What I'm saying is the whole timeline would be the same anyway. Now, after repeatedly being disappointed by reality, you might start to think, hey, if I keep lowering my expectations, then not only would I never be disappointed, I would actually always be pleasantly surprised. Unfortunately, I found the blunder there is assuming your expectations still have room to further descend. Regardless, the only move we can make at this point is not to lower our expectations, but to lower our fear of missing out. And the way to do that is to think not of how to expect less, but of how what you're doing now is actually a better way to spend your time than what you're worried about. As an example, one of the most common times I feel like I'm missing out is when people make a reference to a popular TV show or movie, and I just haven't seen it. But then I think about how much of a waste it would be to actually catch up, and I realize that in reality, it might be better that I haven't seen them. Breaking Bad? already have my own recipes. Friends? Three's enough for me. Black Mirror? I'm already confused most of the time. Game of Thrones? My favorite character would probably just die. House of Cards? I just like Kevin Spacey before I had a reason to. The Office? I've been compared to so many characters on there, I don't want to find out what they're like. Star Wars? That shit's just gonna happen if we wait long enough. Avengers Endgame? Well, last month the memes were about 50% of people turning to dust. But now they're all about Ant-Man entering Thanos' asshole with Miss Frizzle on the magic school bus. So yeah, I'll probably see that one. 
Now, by using this technique to lower your fear of missing out, at this point, things should start feeling pretty good. Your fear of missing out should be approaching zero as you realize there's more important ways to spend your time. You have no expectations of yourself or others, so the world is looking brighter than ever. You feel a social burden being lifted from your shoulders, and at this point, right when your mind and body are becoming whole, something unbelievable happens. But not to you, because you're not there. Your friends run into Drake in a Toronto nightclub, you're not there. All the drinks at your local bar are free because Mr. Beast needs new content, you're not there. The hot German exchange student from high school is visiting and comes to your friend's party, she's out of your league. Which finally brings us to the paradox of missing out. You're not missing out on anything if you go, but you miss out on everything if you don't. And after telling my friend my profound realization, they said to me, so in other words, you're able to stop cool things from happening by being there. I still like my version better, but if they have the nerve to invite me to anything, I will certainly be going.